Philip Morris presents Crime Photographer. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to wake up fresh with no cigarette hangover. Yes, you'll be glad tomorrow you smoked Philip Morris today. Good evening. This is Ken Roberts greeting you for Philip Morris and inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Sell Out. Early afternoon, the Blue Note Cafe. Its door opens, and from the rain-washed street... Uh, hello, Everbert. Huh? Uh, oh, oh, hello, Miss Williams. Hey, you look kind of drowned. Oh, I feel that way. Please get me a cup of coffee, huh? Sure. Looks to me like this rain's gonna keep up all day. No, I'm afraid so. Water, one cup of coffee. Uh, where's Casey? Oh, uh, over at the office. Getting $15,000, we hope. He'll keep himself dry over at the office. Uh... Getting fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, trying to get it with the help of our not too esteemed city editor. Well, what's Casey done that Mister Burke should help him get fifteen grand? Some very important undercover work, Ethelbert, in which I uh, <clears throat> lent some small assistance. Uh, what do you mean? Very confidentially, we've turned up an exclusive story that should blow this town wide open. But the Morning Express will have to. Give us the money to pay for it. Oh, I see. Oh, if our managing editor was in town, we'd get the money without any trouble, but he's away on vacation, and Talbot, the new assistant of his, is a tightwad. Thanks, Walter. Here's your coffee, Miss Oh, Walter. thanks. Well, Casey and Britt may have a hard time selling him. Talbot's the guy who talks funny. Talks funny? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> you mean his state of Maine accent? Maine, where he's from? Uh huh. Around Portland, I think. Mm. And like most real Yankees, he knows how to nurse a dollar. And since he's in charge of the paper's money right now... Say, what is this story that's big enough for a 15 grand payoff, huh? That, Ethelbert, is top secret at the moment. And too dangerous a secret for us to pass along even to you. Look here, Mr. Talbot. This story will be one of the hottest circulation getters the Morning Express has ever had. Burke here agrees with that. I certainly do. Talbot, such an expose of political rottenness will... Mr. Burke, I agree with you and Casey, but you're asking me to risk a large amount of this paper's money for an unknown quantity. Mr. Talbot, I've told you that... All you've told me, Casey, is that for $15,000, a man in confidence of Harry Fitzroy, the gang leader will supply you with evidence that a number of important city officials receive a regular payoff from Fitzroy. But you give me no assurance the evidence will be sound. You have my assurance it'll be sound. Well, who is it that's uh, selling out? I told you. His name has got to be kept out of this. Casey gave his word, Talbot. And the reason he has valuable sources of information among crooks is that he keeps his word. Thanks, Burke. Nevertheless, where I come from, we're taught never to uh, buy a pig in a poke. So before I sanction any payment of $15,000, I want to know exactly what I'm getting. You mean you want me to... Full details, Casey, or no sale. Talbot, another paper may get this story if we wait. That's all, Mr. Burke. It isn't all. I'll go over your head, Talbot. Over my head? You're darn right, I Hold your neck in, Burke. I didn't say I wouldn't tell the big brass here about him if I had to. It seems I have to. All right. Strictly between the three of us only. The guy who's selling out is Squint Hummel. Squint Hummel, eh? Yeah, Bert. He's uh, very prominent in the Fitzroy gang. So you've learned something about our town in the short time you've been here, Mr. Talbot? I've uh, endeavored to apply myself. Now, uh, when and where are you to get the information from Hummel? Tonight. And to meet him at 9 o'clock in an isolated beach house on McBurney's Point. He'll turn over an envelope to me with a list of the city officials who take dough from Fitzroy. 
And with complete data on where, when, and for what services they take it. I'll double column it on the front page, exposing only a few of the crooked politicos each day. We can string the thing out for weeks. Yeah, and with exclusive pictures that I'll get. Yeah, would be great stuff, all right. Now, uh, you're simply going to this McBurney's Point Beach house, Casey, and uh, walk in? Oh, no. Uh And to identify myself by blinking my car lights three times. If everything's all clear... Hummel will switch off his porch light. Aren't you taking a chance and going out there alone with $15,000? Hummel won't attempt to double-cross, Mr. Talbot. I trust him that much. All right, now, do I get the money? Yes, I'll sign an order for you to the cashier. Swell. It's going to be in cash. Of course, Casey, but uh, can I trust you that much? <laughs> Louse Talbot. Annie, he as much as said that he didn't trust me with the paper's money. Oh, forget about Talbot, Casey. He's just a little man who's temporarily in a big job. Mm. When our real boss comes back from his vacation... Boy, will I tell him what I think of his stuffed shirt assistants. Okay, you tell him. Annie, you know, I... I shouldn't be bringing you out here to meet Hummel. And we've gone over that till I'm sick of it. Now, Casey, please remember it was I who gave you the idea that Squint Hummel might sell out on Fitzroy. I have every right to be around when he delivers. Sure, sure, sure. But this McBurney's point is such a lonely spot, eh? So what? Well, I've got 15,000 bucks cash money in my pocket, kid. That much dough is swell bait for a stick-up. Well, who knows you have it? No. I'm just jittery, I guess. Here's the beach house. Yeah. And the porch light is on. Yeah. Which means he's on the lookout for us. All right, I'll give him the headlight flashes we agreed on. One. Two. There. Yeah, that's three of them. His porch light just went out. Uh-uh. That's the all clear. All right, Annie, you stay in the car. Well, I go in and make this trade. I'm not staying in the car. I'm in on this payoff. Right. Come out in the rain and get soaked. I've been out in the rain all day. Now, watch your step going up to the house, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't see a thing. Neither can I. And that foghorn gives me the creeps, Casey. Wait, I hear someone. Hmm? That's you, Squint. Uh, Casey! Who are you? Now, don't... Don't hit me! Uh! Casey? Speak to me, Casey. You're... You're breathing, Casey. Uh, hello, hello, Annie. You're, you're alive. I don't know about that. <laughs> what happened? Well, someone hit us. I don't know who. You first and then me. Uh, I remember now. We were walking towards Squint Hummels in the, in the dark. Yeah. And now we're in a car, and it's our car. We're not on a beach, and this isn't McBurney's Point. Oh, big trees all around us here. Annie. What? Fifteen grand is not my pocket. Casey. That's why we were slugged, that lousy double-crosser, Hummel. Oh, he took the paper's sure, money. Sure, and I was sapped enough to think that he... Casey! What? In the back of the car. Look. <gasps> Holy. It's Squint Hummel. With a bullet hole between his eyes. Oh. <laughs> Get around the back seat of this crate. Oh. Oh, he went almost knee-deep in mud. Never mind the mud. Yeah, there are two other bullet holes in Squint's chest. Well, shot him did a thorough job. Why? Body's still warm. Let's see it. Oh, no, no, you shouldn't go through his pockets like that. Not until the police... Oh, yes, I should when I've lost 15,000 bucks. No. That wasn't on him. See, there's the envelope he was going to give us. You mean the dope on Fitzroy? You get the picture, Ann? Fitzroy got wise to Hummel's sellout. So he has his rod shoot Hummel. He takes the information he has written out for us. And they wait for us to show up and they take our 15 grand as well. As a final touch, we're dumped into our own car along with Squint's body and driven into this mud hole. Why were we driven here and left? Annie, you're not out of your days yet. Hummel's body is in my car. A car I can't move out of this mud. And if I move the body, this, this back seat would still be covered with blood. I'm framed for Hummel's murder. Casey. And a man like Talbot will believe that you killed Hummel so you could keep that $15,000. Sure. After getting a load of his suspicions, the cops would think I meant to ditch Hummel's body somewhere in these woods and then keep on driving. 
He'll figure I got stuck in this mud hole by accident. Well, I, I can tell him Wait that... a minute, kid. Wake up. You're in this as deep as I am. K- Casey... Oh, let me look around in here. Ah, Fitzroy made this frame really good. That gun. Look at that. Three empty shells. The gat's still warm. Hey, Squint Hummel must have been shot here just now. And somebody in the neighborhood may have heard the shots. Look, Casey. Huh? That bobbing light up the road. I see it. Somebody carrying a lantern. Annie, get out of this car. We've got to meet him and head him off. He mustn't have a chance to see the body. No. We must have time to think this out. Say, kid, we are in a jam. Hi, down there. By yourself. You folks in any trouble? No, no, no trouble. Oh, no. Out for a walk on a bad night like this? Uh, yeah, we like the rain. Must have a car parked someplace. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't get stuck in the mud, did you? Oh, no, no. No, that car's all right. Hey. I didn't make you out till I got this close, mister. Guess you didn't find that telephone. Telephone? I told you there was one at the Beeman place. You told me I'd find a telephone at the Beeman place? Don't tell me you don't remember that. Mister, I never saw you before. You haven't been to your house? He was. About ten minutes ago, lady, but I didn't see you. <laughs> I don't like this at all, Annie. Look at me close, mister. Mosley's your name. Okay, Mr. Mosley. Look at me close. I'm the guy you saw before? Well, uh, you got on the same hat and raincoat, uh, same size, and you got mud up to your knees. Look at my face. I couldn't see your face before. You had your collar up and your hat pulled down. Annie, you get it? <laughs> I'm afraid so. You're the same fella, all right, only now I ain't so sure that you're a boss man. Uh, uh, what man? Uh, like I said, when we talk at the door of my house... Annie, up the road. <laughs> Car coming. The police searchlight on. That's a prowl car. Mm-hmm. Oh, brother, now we're in for us. Casey, what are we going to do? Hey, who are you people? You know me, Officer Bannon. Oh, oh, hello, Mosley. Just got a radioed report of gunshots. Know anything about them? I hear them, too. Glad to see you drive up here, Officer Bannon. I think these folks need investigating. Now, look here. Where's your car, mister? I... We may as well face it, Casey. Yeah. All right, my car's stuck in a mud hole back there, Officer. You'll find a dead man in it. A dead man? But we can explain. Put your arms over your head. That's right, Bannon. Put your gun on. The sooner you get Captain Logan of Homicide out here, the sooner you can relax your grip on that shooting iron. Uh, Captain Logan knows us very well. I'll bet he does. And the commissioner will be a friend of yours, too. Well, if you don't believe me, get on that prowl car radio of yours and call it for... Officer Bannon, there's another car coming. Yes, I see. Hey, you in that sedan. Who are you? What are you doing here? This is for you, copper. Oh. 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 Officer Bell has been shot. I'm getting out of here. Rest him. Don't move or you'll get it too. Hey, the old guy, where did he go? He got away among those trees. Anyway, those two are the chumps we want. What? You want us? And how? Hand over that envelope you got from Hummel, Casey. Hey, you're, uh, you're Ed Stark, one of Fitzroy's mob. Where's that stuff? You think I got something from Hummel? Yeah. I don't get this. Well, Casey, we thought... Will you hand it over? Or shall we find it? The hard way for you. Starkey, I didn't get any stuff from Hummel. Yeah, that's the way you want I'll it. Work him over, Starkey. Don't hit him with that gun! Oh! You... You'll get the same, sister, if you don't come clean. That's a promise. Now, where's the stuff Squint Hummel gave you? And where is Hummel? Think back. Think back. This morning, did you wake up with... Cigarette hangover. That stale, musty, smoked-out taste in your mouth. Cigarette hangover. That tight, dry, uncomfortable feeling in your throat. Yes, that's what takes the joy out of smoking. And when that happens to you, it's time to change to Philip Morris. Remember... Philip Morris is the one, the only cigarette proved definitely less irritating, definitely milder than any other leading brand. That fact is recognized by eminent medical authorities. No other cigarette can make that statement. Remember, top-ranking doctors, eminent nose and throat specialists, actually suggest Philip Morris in cases of irritation due to smoking. That's why we say, if you're tired of cigarette hangover... Join the millions and change to Philip Morris. You, too, will discover in Philip Morris a milder smoke, a fresher, cleaner smoke than you've ever known before. 
And now, back to Casey, crime photographer. I've looked everywhere, Starkey, including the body of the cop I knocked off. The envelope just ain't on nowhere. I told you, men, we never saw any envelope. Shut up. Sure you gave Casey's car a thorough going overboard? You saw me do it. Yeah. That boss isn't going to like this. Boss or no boss, we got to get out of here. That old guy who got away may have phoned the cops by now. In case he's still out cold. Lift him into your car. Drop him in the back seat. Okay. Where are you taking him? You'll find out, Miss Williams, because you're going to the same place. What are you going to do? Make you tell us where you hid that stuff after Casey killed Hummel? He didn't kill Hummel. You told us a lot of bush war. Casey's in, Starkey. And uh, you get in, sister. In front. I... All right. You drive, Paul. We're on our way. Head for the Blossom Street hideout. I'll phone the boss from there. He's going to be awful sore because we didn't find his stuff, Starkey. Yeah, we're bringing him Casey and his gal, aren't we? He's lucky we have that much on the short notice he gave us. Well, he got that phone tip on such a short notice. Fitzroy? So... Got a phone tip? Yeah. <laughs> There's no harm in telling you anything, sister, since you won't tell anyone else. Some guy who wouldn't give his name phoned the boss around 9 o'clock and spilled your whole setup. He told Fitzroy that you'd find us... Where you did find it? That's why we went there. But we expected to find Squint Hummel alive. You and Casey worked too fast for us. You didn't go first to McBurney's Point? McBurney's Point? Why should we have gone there? Now, look here. If you're telling the truth, somebody's double-crossed Fitzroy and you as Casey and I have been double-crossed. Now, please believe me. If we did or the boss does, you won't be any better off. You and this sleeper back here saw us shoot a cop tonight. And we ain't giving you no chance to talk about it. We'll make our chance. Hey, Paul, he's got my gun. Yeah, now, blast your head off, Paul. If you take your hands off that wheel, straighten this car out. Okay, okay. We ain't passing back there. That's right. I was just waiting for Stark to get careless. Oh, you don't move, Stark. All right, now, Bull, stop the car. Okay. And take his gun. You bet. Got it. Get out on the road, you birds. Get out. You heard me. Casey, aren't you going to take them to the police? If throw in the clink ourselves, the murder of Squint Hall? Well, you I'll... can't do nothing, Dad. Oh, yes, I can. I can give you what you gave me. Hey, hey, don't hit me when I come in. Don't. Oh. Sure is nice to be on ascending end for a change. Gee, you hit them so hard, Casey. Not too hard. They'll lie quiet there and the cops pick them up. But you just said that, that we that couldn't... we couldn't take them to a precinct station. That's true, but I can and will phone from one of the nearest drugstore. Without saying who you are. Yeah, I'll get back in their car. Andy, we're leaving. Okay. Where do we go after you phone the cops to get those guys? You go on the land, kid, until we can deliver the real killer of Squint Hummel. Well, how are you going to find him? We have no idea who he is. Annie. Hmm? Old man Mosley saw the killer. The guy who wore a raincoat and a hat like mine. Now, that was part of the frame-up. To place me definitely at the scene of the murder. Well, but who had any motive to frame you and me outside of Fitzroy? You heard what those gunmen told me. Yeah, that they didn't go to McBurney's Point. And that Fitzroy knew nothing about... Hummel's promised sellout to us until he got an anonymous phone tip. I... Oh, nuts, it doesn't make sense. Well, I think the whole thing just, just happened as it did, Casey. Wait a minute, there's a drugstore. After I phone the nearest precinct station and tell them where to pick up those fits for of Red Hots, I'm going to call Logan. Well, Casey, Captain Logan's a uh, cop first and a friend afterwards. Now, if you give him an inkling of, of where he can find it. Well, I won't, yes. But I think he'll put friendship first for, well, maybe a little while. I hope so. Okay, I don't see any cops around. Now, you stay in this car, Annie, and keep your face out of sight. Yeah, all right. But, Casey, we can't uh, stay on the lam for very long. No, I'm afraid not, kid. You, at least, aren't the type. Casey, where are you phoning from? I've already said I won't tell you, Logan. You know, I could put a tracer on this call. I'll be gone from here before then. Now, look, pal. Do you believe the story I've just told you? Yes, I'm sap enough to believe it. But I'm only one cop in a big department. And aside from the circumstantial evidence, that old guy Mosley nails you tight to the murder. Casey, you and Miss Williams come down to headquarters and give yourselves up. After you just said I'm nailed tight for something I didn't do? We're sure to get you, pal. Every precinct's alerted for you. Now, a lot of tough precinct cops... You might not handle you with gloves on. I'll make things as easy as I can. If you come down here, well, I'll help you. Ann and I need your help before we come down, Logan. She at least isn't going to be locked in one of your crummy cells if I can help her. You know, Casey, I've I'm got... not going to ask for help you can't give. 
Where's Mosley? Yeah, we're holding him as material witness for his own safety. Well, I want you to send Mosley home. Look, Casey, the Fitzroy gang don't like witnesses. They'd bump off old Mosley. Logan, I sent a carload of precinct men to pick up the killers of that cop. Well, that's news. Now, I'm delivering them to you. In return, I want Mosley at his home. Why? Well, I can't talk to him very freely at headquarters. You can't change his story that he saw you after those shots. Give me a chance to try. Look, pal, you you can guard Mosley yourself while I talk to him. Keep all other cops away. Um, okay, Casey. But the moment you come into Mosley's house, I'm placing you under arrest. All right. And Casey? Yeah? I want Ann Williams, too. No. She's no part of our deal. Casey, I... Have handcuffs for one in an hour. So long, pal. <laughs> Mr. Casey, I'm just as sure as can be you're the fellow come to my door tonight. Yeah, but Mr. Mosley, you admit you didn't get a good look at that guy's face. Over and over, he's repeated his positive identification of everything else about you, Casey. Well, the guy's hands, his feet, he... well, wasn't there something about him that was different from me? You, you said his voice... People can change their voices. Casey, I've allowed you well over an hour and you've gotten nowhere. Yeah, I know. I... I'm finished, Logan. I'm glad of that. I'd like to get a little sleep tonight. Uh, we'll be going, Mr. Mosley. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's one thing that bothers me about you, young fella. I I could have sworn you were a boss man. Boss man? You said that once before. What do you mean by the boss man? Well, that's what the folks in, in the part of New England I come from call the folks that live east of them around boss, Maine, on account of their way of talking. Logan, I got it. I've got it. God was. The answer to this murder frame-up. Logan, if you and Mosley will help me, I'll give you the real killer of Squint Hummel delivered to this house. A car. A car's pulling up outside. Yeah, that's his car, Mosley. Casey, he did fall for that line. You had Mosley hand him over the phone. <laughs> I'll say he did. He's on his way to the door. Uh, we'll get out of sight in that next room, Casey. Okay, come on. I'll be covering you, Mr. Mosley, so don't worry. I ain't worried. Good morning. I, uh... I know who you are. Come in, mister. You are, uh, Mr. Mosley? Uh-huh. But you knew that without asking. We met only last night when you come to my door and said you wanted to use telephone. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Uh, well, if I'm mistaken, why did you drive way out here to see me at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, hey? Because uh, your phone call of an hour ago roused my curiosity. You uh, intimated that uh, you possessed exclusive information about the uh, murder of a man named Hummel. Let's not beat about the bush, mister. I said over the phone, as I'm going to say now, that the fellow accused of that murder ain't guilty. And I know who is guilty. Who? Oh. You. What evidence have you for your accusation? I'm, uh, I'm keeping that to myself until we make a deal. I'd like you to be more specific. I'll tell you only this. Unless I'm paid to keep my mouth shut, I can... I can send you to the electric chair. Yep. Your, uh, blackmail proposition is so outspoken, I assume we're quite alone here? Uh, we're alone, mister. I know something about blackmailers, Mosley. The first payment is never the last. I'm going to pay you nothing. Uh, hey, what are you doing with that gun? I'm going to kill you with it. That's what you think, Talbot. Keep Stop it. that gun, Talbot. No! Oh! Neat shot right through his gun hand, Logan. Oh, you smart guys never learn what chumps they are. This, this was a, a frame-up. Yeah, and a better one than you tried to pull on me. This one worked. Let's be gone, Talbot. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Logan. Wait a minute. I'm shooting pictures of this baby first. <laughs> yeah. When I turn him into the paper, Talbot, it'll give me pleasure to spread the news that we need a new assistant managing editor. We'll join our friends in the Blue Note in just a moment. But first... It's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to wake up fresh. 
with no cigarette hangover. Yes, that's something more and more smokers who have changed to Philip Morris are discovering every day. Millions of new smokers now enjoying in Philip Morris a milder smoke, a fresher, cleaner smoke than they've ever known before. And for a good reason. For in Philip Morris, they enjoy the one cigarette proved definitely less irritating, definitely milder than any other leading brand. Yes, it's actually suggested by top-ranking doctors, eminent nose and throat specialists in cases of irritation due to smoking. Doesn't it make good sense for you, too, to try Philip Morris? Yes, join the millions and see what a difference it makes, what a pleasure it is to smoke America's finest cigarette. Next time you step up to a cigarette counter, call for Philip Morris. And remember, you'll be glad tomorrow you smoked Philip Morris today. Them state of Mainers say bath for bath, huh, Casey? Yeah, a lot of them do, Ethelbert. Especially around the town of Bath or Ball, Maine. <laughs> and when Mr. Mosley said he first thought the man who came to his door was a boss man, a light broke in our uh, Mr. Casey's brain. Yeah, it finally broke after he'd said it several times. And then Talbot was from Maine. He used that broad A. And he was one of the very few people who knew about our setup with Squint Hummel. Well, I figured our new assistant managing editor had gone in for a little murder. I can't understand why a fellow with a swell job like he had did what he did for only 15,000 bucks. Well, that was only incidental, a part of the frame on us. What do you mean, Miss Williams? Well, Talbot had a million-dollar blackmail scheme, and with the evidence Hummel was to sell us, he planned to shake down Fitzroy and all the crooked politicians on his payroll. I see. But now the cops have that evidence. Mm Mm-hmm. And it'll be used to send Fitzroy and a lot of his trained seals to jail. Uh, also, the cops got back the papers 15 grand. There's one thing I still don't get, Casey. What's that, pal? Why did Talbot make that anonymous phone call to Fitzroy and tip him about Hummel's sellout? Well, to make his perfect crime more perfect. <laughs> if Fitzroy's gunman had killed us, everybody'd think that we'd killed Hummel and taken it on the land. Yeah, no one would have ever suspected Talbot. Gee, we sure missed you around here. Would you really know, pal? Well, that reminds me, Casey. There's a little matter of $13.20 that's overdue. Annie, come on. We're on the lam again. Friends, remember this. If you're tired of cigarette hangover... Call for the one cigarette that gives you a milder, fresher, cleaner smoke. Yes, from now on... Call for Philip Good night, Johnny. See you next Thursday, same time, same station, when Philip Morris again will present another exciting adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Until then... Smoke a pipe? You get real solace, comfort, and pleasure from Revelation. Plus smooth burning. Plus a swell aroma. Revelation pipe tobacco is a revelation in smoking pleasure. Only 15 cents. Try Revelation. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is produced and directed by John Beats. It is written by Alonzo Dean Cole and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music by Cy Fewer, and the program features Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist, and this is Ken Roberts saying goodnight for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.